Father Bede Griffiths is a Benedictine monk from England who came over to co-found a monastic institution in India. And his was an attempt to express Christianity in the Hindu culture, rethink Christian experience in Indian philosophies. I think it's perfectly possible to discover a deeper, um, deeper dimension of Christian faith through Vedanta, yoga, Buddhist teaching, uh, Sufi teaching, and so on, and enrich your Christian faith. Father Bede, to me, is like a father. He's also, to me, what is called the guru, which is very particular. It's more than teacher. It's someone who has an experience of God and who's able to communicate that to someone else who is looking for it. You see, I look out on the trees here, and there's this lovely uh, there, and the bay there, and you and here around, and I see all these differences, but it's somehow it's all enclosed in a unity. It's so profoundly one, you see. All the multiplicity of you and I and everybody around is part of a whole which is totally one, and yet we retain our uniqueness. We have to let go of all the complications of life. You see, for me, coming to America from India, the complexity of life, all these telephones, for one thing, you know, and cars and TV and so on, it's very wonderful in its way. But you see, in India, we have none of these things. And in the simplicity, you seem to get a, an integrity. Your whole life becomes more whole. You're not sort of distracted, you see, by so many things. If people can learn to simplify their lives, you know, at least in part, to have, have some sphere of simplicity where you can let go of everything and be simple in the presence of God. I think that is a wonderful grace in your life, you know. We have to think about God. We need some image. We need some concept. We need the Bible or some sacred scripture to give us an understanding about God, you see. And that is our guide. But we should not stop there. All images and concepts and ideas we may form should take us beyond image and concept to the mystery beyond. I've been reading some Thomas Aquinas again recently, and he's extremely clear. He's wonderful on God's presence in the whole creation, God's presence in all humanity, God's presence in the church, and of course in the sacraments. And then he goes on to say, all this is nothing in comparison with God. God is. You can't reject doctrine and uh, ritual, I think. They have their place and their value, but you must not stop with them. They're all stepping stones, and you've got to go in and through them to the reality itself. My own mother was a very wonderful person, you know, um, and she told me once that she had a very difficult time. We were very poor for many years. She had to work very hard, keep the family going, <clears throat> and one day, she saw herself in a mirror with a sort of light around her. And I'm convinced, you know, that she was living a very deep life of prayer. She used to pray. I used to see her kneeling by the bed every evening. And a simple, ordinary person, you know, but I'm sure she had a deep experience of God without realizing it. So I think it's open to anybody. And not you haven't got to be a Christian either, you know. I think an atheist who's totally aware of justice, of truth, of this something which he's got to live in his life, he can be united with God at a very deep level. There is a concrete presence of God in every situation which we normally bypass because of our preoccupations. And I try deliberately to keep conscious to look for that in the most mundane of activities. Then it becomes interesting moment to moment to moment you become open to just the, hap the the whole surprise and mystery of the moment. That's our task, really, uh, day by day, really, to see the reality behind the appearances, you see. Don't abolish the appearances, but don't cling to them and think they are the reality. <laughs>